Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sir Ricky. Welcome to another episode of our Mathematics Online class with Philippine Organization of Mentors in Mathematics, or HOMI. In today's lesson, we're going to discuss about properties of radicals. Um, we'll be discussing about uh, product property and uh, division property. But the question is, do we have a subtraction and addition property? Let's find out. So guys, are you ready? Let's go. We will discuss the properties of radicals. We'll start with multiplication property of radicals. Okay, what do you mean by the multiplication property of radicals? It states that n root of a and n root of b represent real numbers. Then, the n root of ab is equal to the n root of a times the n root of b. By the way, um, uh, the n root of a, so our a is uh, the radicand, and our n is the index, and we're using the radical sign. When you convert this to rational exponent, this is equal to a raised to 1 over n. So meaning, the numerator, the base is a, and the numerator is 1, the denominator is n, so the denominator will be the index. Okay, our index here is n. So meaning to say, if we are going to get the nth root of the product of a and b is equal to the product of the nth root of um, a and b. Alright? So, we have this one. The nth root of the product of two numbers, a, b, is equal to the product of their nth roots. Alright? So, I think that's clear. So, we're going to give an example. We have the square root of 4 times 25 is equal to, and uh, the square root of 4 times square root of 25. Let's find out if the two are equal. Okay, for the first, we have to get the product of 4 and 25, that's the square root of 100, which is equal to 10. What about this one? We'll get the square root of 4, which is 2, times the square root of 25, which is 5, and it turns out to be 10. So, I'm going to say um, the two are equal. Another example is the cube root of A times 64. This is equal to the cube root of A times the cube root of 64 based on the multiplication property. All right, we'll find out if um, the result are equal. So, this is equal to the cube root of the product of 8 and 64. That's the cube root of 512, which is equal to 8. You multiply 8 3 times. 8 times 8, that's 64. Times 8, that's 512. So, correct, meaning the cube root of 512 is 8. Okay. Let's go to this. The cube root of 8, think of the numbers when you multiply 3 times, um, is equal to 8. So, of course, that's 2. Okay. And the cube root of 64 is 4. Because 4 times 4, 16 times 4, that's 64. So, when you multiply 2 and 4, you get 8. Okay. So, meaning the two are equal. So, take note that the roots of the product of two numbers is equal to the product of their and roots. All right, we'll give um, another example. So the square root of 25x squared. So this is equal to um, you get the individual square root, the square root of 25 times the square root of x squared. 25 is a perfect square, so that's why it is equal to 5. And the product or uh, and the square root of x squared is x, so the product is 5x. All right, next. The square root of 36xy, so 36 is a perfect square, is equal to 36 square root of 36 is 6, and x and y are not perfect square, so they will remain inside the square root. 
Alright, so any question for the multiplication property? Let's go to division property of radicals. Um, here is the definition. The division property of radicals states that the nth root of A and the nth root of B represents real numbers. Then, the nth root of A over B is equal to the nth root of A over the nth root of B. Alright? So, we have a exceptions here. B is not equal to 0 because uh, if B is 0, this is undefined in real numbers. Take note that the nth root of A and nth root of B are real numbers. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. Oh, yeah. So, we have the nth root of the quotient of two numbers. This is... Uh, um, the quotient of two numbers, the nth root of the quotient of two numbers is equal to the quotient of their nth roots. Alright, so this is division property. Let's take a look at some examples. Okay, um, the square root of 100 over 4 is equal to the square root of 100 over the square root of 4. That's the question. Okay, um, this is equal to the square root of 100 divided by 4, that's square root of 25. And square root of 25 is equal to 5. Okay, let's go to the second one. 100, the square root of 100 over the square root of 4 is equal to the square root of 100 is 10, and the square root of 4 is 2. So, to simplify, we have 10 over 2, that's equal to 5. So, we need to say that this property is true, alright? The division property of radicals. Um, we'll give another example. The cube root of 64 over 8, do you think it's equal to the cube root of 64 over the cube root of 8? Okay. This is equal to 64, the cube root of 64 over 8, 64 over 8, that's um, 8. So the cube root of 8. And the cube root of 8 is equal to 2. Obviously. Now, let's go to the second one. The cube root of 64 is 4, and the cube root of 8 is 2. So, simplify, we have 2. So, let me say, this is correct. Alright? Now, the question is, do we have a properties for addition and subtraction? Alright. Um, this is um, addition. I will show you that... Uh, there is no properties for addition and uh, subtraction. Okay. Let's say, for example, if we have the square root of x plus y, and we have to separate the square root of x plus the square root of y, I can tell you that these are false. Okay. This is not equal. Okay. I'll give you an example. The square root of 25 plus 9 is equal to the square root of 25 plus the square root of 9. So if we have this, the square root of 25 plus 9, that's square root of 34. And the square root of 34 is approximately 5.83. And the square root of 25 is 5. Plus the square root of 9 is 3. 5 plus 3, that's 8. Do you think 8 is equal to 5.83? So, this is false. There is no addition property for radical. For subtraction, this is very obvious. The same with addition. So, we can generalize that the properties of radicals includes the product property and the quotient property. Alright? So, thank you for watching.